Well, hello and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show that I want to start with a question. Do you think that you need to have something terrible happen in your life or you need to be having a nervous breakdown before you reach out to get mental wellness support? Be honest. Do you think about just getting into therapy because it might better your life or in your mind, do you really think that something terrible has to be wrong with you or something terrible has to happen before you reach and pick up your phone and call a therapist? That's my question. So if you're kind of nodding your head sheepishly, yes, that you do think something terrible has to happen, then this episode is for you. Because in this episode, I'm going to break down a bunch of damn good reasons for you to get into therapy right now. And they're most likely not going to be the reasons that you would generally think. So if you happen to be new to this channel, hello and welcome. Please introduce yourself below. We are such a friendly group. We would love to get to know you. Um, before we get started, I want you to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, because I am putting out two new episodes a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. So if you don't know me, you just happen to be here. My name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, and the author of Boundary Boss, which you can get at boundarybossbook.com. And you guys are so um, interactive and always have so many comments, which I always read. And so I wanted to talk about a comment right here. Well, I'm lighting my candle at the same time. I'm doing it, though. I'm doing it. Um, I wanted to highlight a comment from Lori Vanison on the episode called Five Ways to Manage Fear and Anxiety. And Lori says... Thank you so much, Terry. I did many of these things, but was delighted to hear some new ideas like writing at night or taking GABA supplements. Going through the last two years, plus all the other major events in recent days, has made it even more challenging. I really appreciate all of your information and your episodes. Thank you. Well, you are so welcome, Lori. I appreciate you being a part of my crew. Okay, so now let's move on to today's episode. Top reasons to get a therapist. So back to this stigmatization of therapy. People still, many, many people think that if you say, oh, I'm going to get into therapy and they're like, why? You're not crazy. Or if you say someone, oh, it might help you to get into therapy and they say, why? I'm not crazy. It has nothing to do with that. So let's come up with, I'm going to give you some of the top reasons I've seen in the last 25 years of being a psychotherapist, but I'm going to start with my own story of why I got into therapy so young in my life. I was only 19 years old when I got into therapy. I was in college and we had huge snowstorms that closed the school down, but we were still at school, but not going to school. And I had a lot of time on my hands. And suddenly I started waking up feeling kind of depressed, which was a completely new experience for me in my life. Um, I had never been great at managing my anger or my emotions because I never learned how to do that, but that was still at a point in my life when I was still drinking. So I used alcohol to numb the feelings I didn't want to feel, but waking up and feeling depressed, a, a sense of emotional fatigue was really scary for me. And so I went to the student union type place where you could find a therapist and I found a counselor. And that was my first experience of starting with therapy and I could not believe how much better I felt in just talking to someone about how I was feeling, what was going on. It wasn't really like I was looking for that other person to give me answers. It was more, it was so liberating and it, it lifted such a weight off my shoulders to be able to talk to someone and, and keep in mind, I was only 19. So in my young life, I never had anyone who I could speak to who wasn't invested in my happiness. So if I talked to my mother, of course, she didn't want me to be upset or my sisters or even my friends. None of those people could be objective in the way that this therapist, my first therapy experience, she was very objective and wasn't complicated by the fact that let's say she loved me because she didn't, I was just a client and there was something really liberating. So. That was my why then. And then I've just stayed for decades. You know, and I, I've taken a year off here or two years off there, but generally speaking, I look at therapy like it is a luxury 
And as we all know, it's a luxury not everyone can afford. So part of what I'm giving you in the guide that goes along with this episode is a whole bunch of resources. Well, resources on how to find a therapist, resources on questions to ask a therapist, um, free resources if you can't afford a therapist. So there's going to be a lot for you in the guide, which you can get at terrycole.com forward slash guide. Let's talk about other good reasons to get into therapy. Well, yes, of course, we have the big reasons. It could be the death of a relationship. It could be the death of a person. It could be addiction issues. So yes, always it's appropriate for the peak painful experiences in your life to get professional support if you can, if you are able. But there's other reasons too. Like how about getting to know yourself? When you master yourself, when you actually become an expert on you, understanding why you are the way you are psychologically, getting really curious about your reactions and your responses to different situations and people. This is the key to the kingdom of life. According to me, listen, I, I, you know, my my, mom, I'm a therapist. (laughs) So obviously I think there's a ton of value in therapy, but I believe that everyone needs therapy. So one really damn good reason to get into therapy is to know yourself is to learn to love yourself is to learn to have compassion for yourself. Another good reason is if you came from a, you know, complicated family system, like most of us did, you know, complicated relationships, maybe relationships that don't work, maybe, um, no problem solving abilities. How do you think you're going to learn those things in life? Therapy is a really good place to learn those things. Just problem solving. How about effective communication? You know, if you were like me, when I started therapy, anger was one of those forbidden emotions in my family system. So I could never be angry. I wasn't allowed to be angry. So instead I would change that anger unconsciously, of course, into sadness, into depression, into something else because anger was not acceptable which also meant, I remember having a specific conversation with my college boyfriend, God bless him, um, when he was angry about something. He was a pretty emotionally healthy guy and he got angry. He wasn't angry at me. He was just angry at something and he was kind of raising his voice. And I was like, oh wait, hold, time out, time out. I, I don't do anger. He's like, what do you mean? You're not angry. I was like, no, no, I don't, I don't do any other people's anger either. And he's like, So you're telling me I can never get angry? And I was like, yeah, pretty much. (laughs) And he was like, "Uh, okay, well, I don't know that I can commit to never getting angry because isn't it normal to be angry? And obviously this was long, long, long before I became a psychotherapist. But I remember his response is actually now it's kind of funny because he saw how A, impossible that is, and also how unreasonable It's not like we can actually control that emotion. We can push it underground like I did, but it still comes out. And this is where passive aggressive expression of anger, where it comes in. So I couldn't say to someone, I'm angry, but I could be sarcastic or I could slam a door or I could wait a really long time to get back to them to express my displeasure in a passive aggressive way instead of doing it directly. So maybe you just want to learn to be a better communicator, right? Maybe you want to learn how to be in a healthy relationship, how to be a healthy partner in a relationship. If you didn't have any good role models, which I'm going to say, I'm not going to say everybody, but I'm going to say a lot of people did not have good role models. I actually did a survey a couple of years ago um, as I was launching my Real Love Revolution course. And I think out of 2,500 people that I surveyed, 67% said they did not have any good role models for healthy love. That's a lot of people. You're talking about, that means 33% did. That is not a lot. So these are all other things that you can go to therapy for. What about if you have the death of a pet, right? Some people don't think that that's a big deal. 
And if that's you, then you're probably not an animal person or maybe you live on a farm and it's not a big deal. But for many people, the, the loss of a pet is as excruciating or sometimes more so than the loss of certain people in their lives. And so processing that with someone who can help you along with the grieving process is so helpful. I look at therapy and I wanna invite you to look at therapy as a gift that you can potentially give yourself. Of course, it's a luxury because it costs money, but a lot of things have changed, especially since the pandemic. Really in the last 10 years, virtual therapy has become more popular, but then it exploded during the lockdown and the pandemic because we have such an epidemic of people feeling depressed, overusing alcohol, drugs, shopping, sex, all, all of the, the mood altering activities. And also the rate of suicide is so much higher now than it was. So I think the normalization, what happened at least from my perspective as a psychotherapist during the pandemic is that in a way we were collectively brought to our knees. Right? There was nowhere to turn. We couldn't run away from ourselves and our lives as readily as we were able to in the past by being so incredibly busy or by being so incredibly social or by being a complete and total workaholic. And even if you still were a workaholic at home, let's say, because you were working from home, it's not the same as people. So many of my clients did a lot of traveling for a living. And then suddenly we're not being able to do that. Other good reasons to get into therapy. Maybe you have conflict in your friend relationships. Maybe you have conflict in your family of origin relationships. Maybe you are related to an addict. Maybe you are an addict. All of those are damn good reasons to get into therapy. But I think that having a desire to continue your own evolution. It's like making a decision that instead of being like a bit player in the movie of your life, you will be the star of the movie. You will be the director, the producer, the writer. It gives you so much more of an ability when you have robust mental health, your ability to live a self-determined life is far greater in my experience. Maybe you need to learn how to manage your relationships. Maybe you want to learn how to manage your emotions. Are you clear about what you feel? How is your emotional self-regulation? And when you get into therapy, or if this inspires you, and I hope it does, to look for something that's appropriate for you that you can afford, that you go in with the attitude of this is something I get to do, right? This is not something you have to do, but it accelerates your natural growth process. And then it creates growth that might never ever happen if you never got into therapy. So a lot of what we do in therapy is that we cut down the time that it takes you to evolve certain parts of your personality. So maybe you would get there eventually, but maybe you'd get there in 15 years and p potentially working with a therapist, you can get there in two years or three years to the point of having a much deeper self-understanding and a higher self-regard. I can't tell you how many clients I've had and the main reason they've come into therapy is because of their bad relationship to themselves right? Treating themselves like crap, having low self-worth, not feeling good enough, having the imposter syndrome. Those are all damn good reasons to get into therapy. Maybe you want to change careers and you have a profound fear of doing that. That's a damn good reason to get into therapy, to talk it out with someone. And there's all kinds of therapy, you guys. Not everyone has to be a lifer, right? You can do short-term therapy. Maybe you had a traumatic experience years ago that you never unpacked. 
and you want to do short-term trauma therapy with someone, you can do, there's all types of cognitive behavioral therapy and EMDR for trauma work. There is tapping, there is energy things that you can do as well. So it isn't just, I mean, I work, of course, as a therapist, but I also have other professionals that I partner with if that is what my client needs. Maybe you need to talk to a therapist to talk through the fact that maybe you're thinking you might need to go on medication and there's nothing wrong with going on medication. So I just, I'm hoping because this is the end of mental health month and I really just wanted to put a plug out there for the benefits of good psychotherapy. And in the, um, the guide, terrycole.com forward slash guide, I'm going to give you a list of types of therapists that there are. There's PhDs, there, there's LCSWs, that's what I am, which is a licensed certified social worker. There are psychiatrists, there are psycho, psychopharmacologists, which are more, right, people dealing with medication. But talk therapy is one type of therapy. Analysis is a different type of therapy, even though you're talking, but the framework is different. So I give you a whole bunch of information in the resources that I'm going to give you in that guide. So you can really look and think about what it is that you want. I think that for most things, listen, lots of modalities work because my modality is talk therapy. I know that that works, right? So I can't speak to psychiatry and a lot of the other um, modalities Personally, I can only speak to the fact that from a client point of view, meaning me as the client, to me being the professional, talk therapy really works. It is through the therapeutic process when I was still in college, I was in my senior year of college, and this really brilliant therapist was able to say to my face, hey, what you're describing is alcoholic consumption, literally. I was, she was like, I think you're an alcoholic. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? That intervention, that therapist, Bev, changed my life, changed the course of my life. I don't know. I think maybe eventually I would have stopped drinking, but probably a really messy, depressing decade later. I do believe that that is true. So what if we flip the script? on the way we think about therapy and the value of therapy, that why don't we not wait until we're on our knees? Why don't we not wait until we're in total crisis? And listen, sometimes you have to wait until you're in crisis and that's okay too. But I'm inviting you, this is an invitation for you to think about therapy potentially as a gift to give yourself the same way that you go to the dentist so that your teeth don't rot out of your head or you go to a doctor to get a physical, hopefully annually or every other year at least, to be proactive. And it's so important with your mental wellness and it's not just therapy, right? You can read, of course, self-help books. Hi, I wrote a book, it's right there, Boundary Boss. All therapeutically based stuff. So there's so much stuff out there and there's so much free stuff out there. But this is really, um, I want this episode to just stand as a pitch for therapy. There doesn't need to be anything wrong with you for you to want to be more masterful when it comes to your mental wellness. The more masterful we all are when it comes to our mental wellness, the better off the world is going to be. And I think right now, it's a really good time for all of us to take responsibility for our own mental health to the best of our ability, right? That's all we can do is to the best of our ability, but consider it. And if you came from a family system that thought that going to therapy was shameful or a community or a culture or a country, I'm going to ask you to challenge that belief because what I know for sure is being proactive with therapy can spare you so much pain in your life down the road. You deserve to live a happy, healthy life. And 
it is your responsibility to take the actions that can create that, again, to the best of your ability. And I firmly believe that being in therapy for the big and the small things can really, really go a long way to getting you to that goal of really having robust mental wellness. So I hope that this episode was interesting to you. I hope it made you think maybe, maybe you're going to take me up on my invitation to check it out. I also, in the um, guide, terrycole.com forward slash guide, I'm also giving you questions that you can ask a potential new therapist so that you can find out if you are a good match. So if you like this, please share this with the people in your world. Please take care of your mental wellness since the more mentally healthy we all are, the better the world is going to be. And as always, take care of you.